How's it going guys? Welcome to the channel, CM Mike here. Today I'm going to explain in details about what it takes to get into the game industry and work in the game industry. And since I am an artist and I have been in this industry for a while, I would be talking about this subject from my own perspective and I'll try to break it into different sections. But personally, I believe what I am going to say would actually help you regardless of being an artist or a programmer or whatever your profession is as long as you are planning and your goal is to get into the game industry. So let's talk about it. If you want to get into the game industry, you will have to work really hard and there is a lot of competition out there. Just understand that game development is a competitive industry and it is very different than playing games. Games are fun and they make you emotional and it's a lot of joy when you play games. And some of you might think that making games is like playing games, but it is actually very different. And you cannot compare playing games with making games. And some of you want to get into the game industry because you played a game and it made you emotional and you really enjoyed it. But I think you need to understand how games are made and you need to have a good understanding of the game industry before you decide to get in the game industry. There are tons of challenges that you will face if you want to get into the game industry. When you work in the game industry, you are actually going to face different hardships since your job is more like a problem solver, uh, in my opinion, in the game industry. Because you will have to deal with lots of problems and come up with solutions on the go. You have to improvise solutions to the problems that you face. And just because you have a college degree or a university degree in game design, it doesn't really guarantee that you can get into the game industry. In every studio, every single studio that I worked for, we always received hundreds of applications from graduates or juniors thinking that they have what it takes to apply for a job in the game industry. But the reality was only three people out of 300 were qualified after we gave them a test. And after they finished the test, we were able to only hire like three people. That is about 1%. And that's a small number. I heard many, many times that people complained to me and I even read on social media, some people post on social media or other platforms and they say why no one is responding to me when I apply for a job. No one is replying to my emails or why everyone is rejecting me. Every company that I'm applying for is rejecting me. Am I being blacklisted? And honestly, when you look at their resume and their portfolio, you can actually see that they are not even close to where they should be to get the job. They are not even qualified to get that job and they still complain about it. They just have an illusion of being good and they think they are being treated badly or they think they are being blacklisted. And I mean, if you haven't done anything wrong, you shouldn't worry about being blacklisted. I don't even know if a blacklist exists, to be honest with you. The first thing you guys need to do is to deal with reality and don't assume that you know everything. Be realistic so that you can increase your chances instead of blaming others or looking for an excuse because Getting into the game industry requires hard work. And I can tell you guys, it is hard. And it is easy to blame others or find excuses for your failure instead of improving your skill set. And that's what you guys should focus on. You should focus on improving the quality of your work and improve your skill set. To get into the industry, you might have to work in different industries like commercials, toys, or visual effects to gain some experience and to learn teamwork or get better at communicating in a work environment, which is super important. So you don't really have to start in the game industry from the beginning. And you guys should keep that in mind. I know many artists that took the same route. They started from something else. Some artists actually started in a completely different industry and now they are actually successful. They're art directors, lead artists. I know people that they have their own studios, their own game studio, their own outsource studio. And I interviewed some of those people in my podcast. If you guys check my podcast videos, you can see some of those people. I mean, if I talk about myself, I worked for toys, I worked for commercials, and everything I did uh, in the past actually helped me to learn something new and it helped me to grow bit by bit. And this is why you guys need to understand the compound effect. 
I talked about the compound effect in the past in my previous videos or in podcasts. And I can tell you, tell you guys, I think you should read this book called, actually two books, one of them is called The Compound Effect, the other one is called The Atomic Habit, and both of them are going to help you to build the right mindset. They are really good books, so check them out. You might think what you're doing today is a small, but the reality is if you keep doing it and if you put the time and if you improve every day for the next five years, six years, seven years, all of those knowledges will accumulate over time and you will learn a ton of things and you improve a lot. And you can only measure your growth over time, over six months, one year or two years period. And you can both grow as a person, as an artist or whatever your profession is. You could be a programmer because growth happens in the long run and you shouldn't plan short term. One thing you guys should keep in mind, in my opinion, is to focus all of your energy on the right goal. Because I have seen many artists that they think they can get into the game industry and they just say that they want a job and they're looking for a job. And when you look at their stuff, they really don't have what it takes to get a job and they don't know why. And in my opinion, instead of focusing on a job, instead of focusing on getting a job, try to focus all of your energy on learning something new and try to improve your skill set and don't distract yourself by thinking about applying for jobs. Try to improve your work and make a great portfolio and improve your skill set because when you do that, you will definitely get noticed, especially if you're active on social media, on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and so on. That way you will increase your chances of getting the best job with the best pay possible. And you can also leverage that situation because when a company comes to you, you haven't applied for them. They came to you because they liked what they saw, so they decided to ask you to join them or interview you. In that case, you can actually ask them to pay you more. So improve your knowledge and the quality of your work before you think about applying for a job. If you're not getting results, just be humble about it. And instead of blaming others or blaming companies or people, find out why you are not getting results and change your strategy or try to pivot and learn something new or improve whatever you have to improve to get into the industry. Because when you get in, you can open a lot of doors. And by the way, getting in is just the beginning because when you get in, you need to find your place and it's going to take a lot of hard work and you need to learn tons of things and push yourself and work hard to find the, the right place for yourself and become successful in this business. And I call it a business because it is a business and you need to develop a business mindset on the side so you can negotiate better and make more money and basically work for um, a better company or on a good project. Personally, I would recommend that once you work in your first gaming studio, don't settle. Try to change after a couple of years and go to another studio because every studio is different. And when you work in different studios, you will definitely gain tons of experiences and tons of knowledge and wisdom. And all of this would help you to become a more successful person. And then, you know, when you have a clear understanding of the whole industry after you work in a couple of studios, decide where you want to go because maybe you would want to change your job and become an environment artist instead of a character artist. Or maybe you want to start your own studio, your own game studio, author studio, or maybe you want to start teaching instead of working in a studio. So be open about it and try to experiment as much as you can before you settle. I personally had to work in different industries for many years. One of the reasons is because I was not from the United States, so I had to build a portfolio for myself and compete with people that were already in the industry and they were performing on a higher level as a professional. And I had to push myself and work hard enough to get good enough to get demands and compete with these people so that I can find a studio to sponsor me and get me a visa and move me to the United States. And you know what's interesting is, I actually didn't plan to come to the US. I was actually open to go to Canada, to Japan, maybe to Europe or UK. I was open to just any country that would make me happy. And I just wanted to work for a good studio, be successful, move to another country, maybe start my own business at some point. And that was my plan, but I ended up here. And I had to start a small and work as a freelancer for several commercials and cinematic studios and also a gaming studio at the time, back in 2013, if I remember correctly, I did a job for a gaming studio. 
And the same gaming studio, this is the interesting part, the same gaming studio decided to hire me a year or a couple of years later and they sponsored my visa. They were an outsourced studio in Florida and then I moved to the US. Personally, I had to deal with bigger challenges and problems since I am originally from Iran and getting a visa for Iranians is not easy to move to the US or any other countries. And I'm actually happy that I had to deal with all of those problems because I gained tons of experiences and all of those experiences helped me to build a much better mindset and become a better person and become a better problem solver and be where I am today. And while I look at my past, basically past 10 years or 15 years, it gives me a very good understanding of um, my abilities and I feel I can do whatever I need to do in the long run in this life. So I always appreciate all the challenges that I went through. And I say this, I say, if you wanna be successful, you just need to put yourself under pressure because under pressure, you will realize your abilities and you will understand the things you can do that you couldn't actually believe you can do in the past. You know, pressure brings out your real hunter from inside. Dealing with problems or being in uncomfortable situations is actually not a bad thing. Maybe you guys need to embrace it and learn something from it. It's interesting because um, what I went through in life is helping me in every aspect of my life today. In my opinion, everything is connected. We live in the same universe. So whatever we do is kind of connected together. Moving on, even after I moved, I had to change my job several times in the US and work for different studios to grow to where I am today. Basically, this is a long-term process and it takes time. It takes a lot of time. You guys need to keep that in mind. In the beginning, as I said, you might have to work as a freelancer and Working as a freelancer gives you the opportunity to work with different studios and multiple projects and you get ex exposed to different pipelines and processes and it will also help you to improve your communication and sales skills. And both of those are going to help you tremendously in the future. Those are super important stuff, communication and sales. For me, freelancing was actually a great experience because I got to work on many game cinematics, many toys, and all of those actually were kind of related to the game industry and all of them helped me to open my way into the gaming studios. What you do now could give you more credibility in the future. For example, the God of War statue that I made for God of War Ascension, a special package or a special edition, if I remember correctly, gave me some good credibility on my way because I saw that uh, several um, people in different studios had the, the same uh, collectible on their desk. Another example is I made a collectible toy for Doom 20th anniversary and apparently id Software has the same statue in their office. Back in 2015 they approached me, they wanted to talk to me for a possibility of getting me hired in id Software and I couldn't join them unfortunately at the time because I just got a job and moved to Ubisoft. But I believe they came to me because of that statue because I worked on that. So that's another thing. Maybe you guys will do something as a freelancer and you will see the results after three years or four years. For me, once I got into the game industry, it took me less than four years to get a job as a lead character artist. And I worked as a lead character artist on Ghost of Tsushima. It took me less than four years because I already knew the pipeline and I was good on the technical side. And I just needed more experience as an artist in the industry less than four years, basically three and a half years full-time in game industry was enough for me to get that job and work as a lead character artist. Before Ghost of Tsushima, I also worked on Call of Duty World War II. After I was in the game industry full-time for about two years. Before Call of Duty World War II, I worked for Ubisoft and the first company in Florida. So the process of getting there takes time, but once you get there, you can actually grow fast if you keep pushing and if you don't stop. Because look at this. For me, it took me seven years to get a job in the game industry from the time that I started my professional career. I started my professional career back in 2007, my professional full-time job, and ended up in the game industry in 2014. And then in 2017, I became a lead character artist and worked on Ghost of Tsushima, which is one of the most successful games on PlayStation. Also, you guys need to work on your communication skill your English skill if you are not a native English speaker. You will 100% need to learn how to communicate to avoid any sort of problems when you work in the game industry because communication uh, can cause a lot of issues. I have friends that they are not from United States. They came here or they lived here for some time, 
but they have communication issues because their English is not as good as it should be. They're trying to improve it, but you know, when they tell me the stories, they got into a lot of issues and troubles because of not being able to communicate properly. Besides that, you need to learn multiple softwares. As a game developer, whether you're an artist or a programmer or a producer, you will have to learn multiple softwares and each one of those applications can take some time to master. And you need to be patient when you're learning these applications. Obviously, you don't have to learn everything because I don't know everything about Maya or ZBrush. And I just know enough to be able to handle the task in hand. Basically, I can finish the job, but I don't know everything about those softwares. For example, if you're an artist, you will definitely, like if you're a character artist, you will have to learn how to use a game engine or a 3D application like Maya or ZBrush for sculpting for sure, Substance Painter for texturing for sure, and several other applications. And it doesn't just end there because when you get into the game, you will actually notice that they have their own tools and their own applications that they developed in-house. And with every job that you change, you will have to adjust to their engine or their tool set. Also, as I said, a game engine. You should learn an engine like Unreal Engine, for example. It is super important because bigger studios use engines similar to Unreal Engine. And if you learn Unreal, if you get a job in a studio that doesn't use Unreal, it will be easier for you to adapt and use their engine, learn how to use their engine. For example, a Snowdrop from Ubisoft. If you know how to use Unreal Engine, maybe you can adapt faster to a Snowdrop because you understand the fundamentals. It's just about learning a new interface or a new process. Another thing I wanted to talk about is that you need to be a good problem solver. Game development is really hard. And if you think that you can go to college, take this course or that course and multiple get multiple degrees and then work as an artist or a programmer in the game industry, I'm afra afraid to tell you that it is not the end because when you work in games, you will constantly have to solve problems and that means you will need to become a good problem solver. And this happens over time and you should not run away from problems that you face. Just try to fix them. What I do when I wanna fix problems is if I face a big problem, I just break it down into smaller chunks and try to fix each small section one by one. And then I put it together and I fix the whole problem um, easier. Because when you look at the whole thing, it might be harder, it might be overwhelming. If you want to work as a character artist, you definitely need to learn more than a sculpting high-risk models. You will have to deal with character budgets, performance and memory management, or sometimes tech team will have a specific request that will make you uncomfortable. Maybe after two months of finishing a character, they will come to you and tell you, hey, we have this problem and we want you to change this part of the model. And you need to be ready to solve that problem and um, you know, op be open about it, be open-minded. And the thing is like, if you guys solve a lot of problems, eventually you will get good at it. So keep that in mind. And basically every department in the game industry deals with different problems. Engineers have their own problems, like finding ways to improve the performance or manage the memory better, or writers have their own problems, which is interesting because you might think that writers may not have problems, but they have to deal with their own problems because think about it this way, maybe, maybe they will want to have a specific character like a giant in the game, in this story but that character could actually cause a lot of technical issues and makes it impossible for the character team to make that character in the game, right? Or maybe the design team will have objections when it comes to that request from the, the writer. So you guys need to learn to work together as a team and try to fix problems together as a team. And even if you work as a team, you'll still need to be good uh, at problem solving as a person. So you need to develop the right mindset. And that means you need to be a good communicator if you want to solve problems at, in a team, right? Communication is super important. You can't just expect others to understand your point immediately and accept whatever you say, because sometimes you will have to repeat what you mean or what you think, or give people time to think about your ideas, to process them better. Maybe people will listen to you, they will go home, come back to, to the office next day, or maybe even after a month, they will come to you and say, hey, I thought about what you said, and now maybe it's the time to think about it more or talk about it more. I have another suggestion. Maybe we can mix it together and come up with a better solution. So you guys need to be patient. And the last thing that I wanna talk about is that you might have to move to another country if you wanna work in the game industry. Because as you know, majority of the game developers, game studios, big game developers are in the United States. And the pay also is much better here in the US. 
And, you know, comparing to Canada or comparing to Europe, it's actually, they, they pay much better here comparing to other places. So it kind of makes sense for you to try to get a job and move to the US. And if you want to move, you will have to prove that you are better than those who are already in the industry and are already working for the big companies, right? You have a big competition. And there are pros and cons when it comes to competing and when it, when it comes to deciding if you want to move. Because for example, you will have to work much harder and compete with the best. And you will have to learn a lot more and improve a lot more, which is hard. Working is hard is actually hard. That's why it's called working hard. But the other thing is on the other side, if you work hard, you'll get better and that's great. You'll learn tons of things which you can use in the future. So that's not a bad thing, right? It's just hard for a certain period, period of time. And depends on what kind of results you want to get, you will have to deal with um, different situations and accept the reality. Like if you want to work for a specific studio, maybe you should change your strategy. So it's not going to be easy. It is going to be hard, but I'm sure you guys can do it. If I can do it, you guys can do it too. Also on the other side, there could be cons and the cons could be moving away from your family and everyone that you know, moving away from your country. So keep that in mind. And in that situation, you guys need to ask yourself this question. You guys need to ask, do you think that moving is going to change your life and improve it a lot in the next five years or 10 years? Maybe you should ask those kind of questions and figure out an answer for it. Do you think if you move to US, you're going to improve your financial situation? Do you think you're going to improve your mindset and your life for better and make a better family? And for me, that was the case. And I don't regret my, my move. I actually moved a lot and I think I did the right thing. And honestly, actually, I look at the past 10 years or 15 years and I realize that I can do a lot more than I could imagine. And that's a great thing. It kind of gives me more confidence to trust myself. And I think it's going to be the same for you guys. If you move to another country and achieve all of your goals in five years and 10 years, you're going to have a good track record which you can follow and improve your future. By the way, even if you live in the United States, you might have to move from east or south to the west or north or different places and you know knowing that us is a huge country you know it's like a big continent basically it's basically going to take like hours of flight like six hours for me it took like six hours from florida to go to california so it's a big country it's like moving from one country to another country when you move from a states the only difference is uh, that you don't need a visa when you live in the us so that's a great thing and basically, if you're not ready to deal with moving, then you might have to look for other alternatives. And right now it is actually not a problem because everyone is working from home and you can work from home remotely if you're in the United States. Maybe some studios accept you even if you're out of USA. And who knows, uh, maybe the future could be the same, you know? Hopefully this pandemic is going to be over soon because of the vaccine. We have seen the results are coming out and they're coming up with vaccines so fast. Hopefully they're working. And, you know, maybe, you know, it's already showing that some studios are saying that they're open to uh, remote work forever, right? So uh, that's another possibility. If you're in the US, maybe you can work for a studio in another state without moving. So keep that in mind because moving is stressful and it is hard and requires a lot of planning. And since I moved a lot, maybe I can share some of that experience with you guys if you guys want me to. Let me know in the comment section if you guys are interested to see a video about my experiences about moving from another country to US and from different states and living in different cities and so on. I would be more than happy to make that video. And that's it for today, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and help me to grow this channel. And see you guys next time.